So, you're back. Okay, guys, I wasn't gonna make a theory on this, but I was watching Coraline the other day and I was able to develop two theories that uncovers the truth on Mr. Bobinski and the Bell Dam. Okay, so I know there are a whole bunch of theories on Coraline and the characters in Coraline, but I don't think I've ever heard this theory before. So without further ado, let's just get into it. You're just in time for supper, dear. So we all know of the other mother by now, but who really is she and what does she want? And why doesn't anyone question the neighbors? Do not go through little door. If you ask me, Mr. Bobinski sure does raise an eyebrow. But okay, let's just focus on the Bell Dam for now. Why are you all here? The Bell Dam. Bell Dam literally means old, malicious, ugly witch. Which perfectly describes her. I mean, she is definitely old, seemingly. She is malicious and ugly well i don't want to be mean but you know and whether she is a witch or not that is a term used for people who seem to have magical abilities or beldam can also be derived from the french term beldam the beldam and as you may or may not know there is a poem by the poet John Keats, written in 1819, and its title is La Belle Dame Sans Merci, which means the beautiful lady without pity, which sounds very familiar, doesn't it? I mean, who else but the Belle Dame to match that description? Wrong, Coraline. Although she is not, you know, beautiful, that... You know, she's beautiful in her own way. You know, girl, kill it. Anyway, um, I have reason to believe she used to be so beautiful when she was younger. And I believe that because of the poem. I met a lady in the Mets, full beautiful, a fairy's child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day long. For sidelong would she bend and sing a fairy song. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed full sore. And there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for. So at first, I thought that John Keats, the poet, is the one who met the Bell Dam. But after a little bit of research, I found out that John Keats wrote this poem after his brother died from tuberculosis. So my theory is that Tom Keats is the one who met the Bell Dam and fell in love with her. Don't worry, I have more proof to back this up. So in the poem, the poet keeps referring back to her eyes and how wild her eyes are. He doesn't say beautiful or, or anything like that. He says wild. And no, I do not believe that the Beldam had buttons for eyes at that time. But I mean, come on, the reference is there. But don't forget about this reference because I am going to refer back to the eyes later on in this video. But I just want to point out the most important part of this poem. John Keats, the poet, keeps referring to this beautiful lady as a fairy's child. There's one tiny little thing we need to do. Yes, ma'am, some more research. And so I did a little bit more research on fairy tale folklore. And what I found is that when a fairy has a child and it has some sort of defect, they swap a human being with one of their children or anything else in their place but mainly children and they are called changelings but nonetheless they are a fairy's child and apparently supposedly in fairy tale folklore whenever a changeling grows up they either go one of two ways 
they either remember that they are a fairy and they come from fairies or they don't at all and they just grow up thinking that they're humans when they're not and usually when a fairy's child knows that they come from fairies but they are changeling they usually grow up to be evil So do I believe that the Beldam is a fairy's child? Yes, yes, a thousand percent yes. The Beldam is a changeling. But does she know that she is a changeling? Supper's ready. Yes, I do believe that she knows and there are two reasons for this. One, the most obvious one, she is evil. And two, in the poem, it says that she took Tom Keat to her elfin grot, which basically means an elf's home. And if you didn't know, elves are most definitely fairies. Before I move on, I want to further prove my point that she is a fairy child, a changeling to be more specific. So many, many, many people believe her to be 150 years old. I personally don't, but more on that later, but I do believe she is very, very old. And if you didn't know, the lifespan, according to fairy folklore, the lifespan of a fairy is between 1,000 to 1,500 years. So that would explain why she hasn't died yet. Also, many fairies can actually shapeshift. So that would explain why the Beldam can turn herself into the other mother why she can look so similar to Coraline's real mother. Not only that, but fairies can actually travel into different dimensions. Does that ring a bell for you? The portal? So that just further proves that the Beldam in this poem is the actual Beldam in Coraline. Not to mention there is a literal fairy ring in the movie. The thing is, this poem was actually written in 1819, published in 1820, and John Keats' brother, Tom Keats, died from tuberculosis in 1818. So based on the time period, and based on the age gap of John Keats and his own wife, I would assume that Tom Keats, who was 19 at the time of his death, fell in love with the Beldam during that same year or so. And that would make the Beldam around 16 years old at the time. I made a garland for her head and bracelets too. And fragment zone, she looked at me as she did love and made sweet. She moan. found me roots of relish sweets and honey wild and monadew. And sure, in language strange, she said, I love thee true. I saw pale kings and princess too, pale warriors, death pale were they all. They cried. La belle dame sans merci, the hath in thrall. So what that basically means is that Tom Keats felt as if the beldam loved him. And that's what she said to him. She told him that she loved him and that that was true. But Tom Keats knew that the beldam hurt so many other people and she didn't care so you know how she is a changeling well since she knew that she was a changeling most fairies that know grow up to be evil and i think that's what she was becoming but then she met tom keats and she fell in love with him And yes, she hurt others in her past, but Tom Keats, he was different. But as we all know, Tom Keats died in 1818. And this was tragic news for the Beldam. She could not handle it. It was so painful for her to see 
the love of her life slip away from her. One thing I didn't mention is that according to fairy folklore, fairies do not have souls. So imagine the pain she must have been in to know that she would never ever see him again. Because many people believe that humans do have souls. Her soul would not get to meet his soul again because she has no soul. When she dies, she dies. So before starting this video, I didn't realize how long it was actually going to be. So I decided to divide this video up into two parts. In this video, you got the backstory of the Bell Dam. But in the next video, you will see how that correlates with the events in Coraline. And we will also go into why we shouldn't trust Mr. Bobinski. So if you want to see the next part of this video, make sure to subscribe. Believe me, you don't want to miss it. Good morning, wake me, it's way too early, but I don't care. You're not fake in your head, so kind of kiss in my face. You're amazing, you swear too often, give me that look.